I'm here with Dr. Kenneth Binmuller to discuss his recent paper, Underwater EMR of Adenomas of the Appendiceal Orifice. Uh, so let's get right into this. AO lesions are widely considered an indication for surgery. Why can't these lesions be removed endoscopically? They theoretically could, but there's really a substantial risk of perforation. And the reason for that is that the uh, you lose the muscular expropria where the appendix attaches to the cecum. Um, and of course the wall is extremely thin at that part of the colon. Uh, but the second concern is incomplete resection. Uh, when you have an adenoma that is extending to the base of the AO. And so for these two reasons, generally, when a lesion is found at the AO, it's referred to surgery. All right, so, so that being said, what inspired you to attempt these lesions? I've been doing underwater colonoscopy, so using water um, uh, filling of the colon uh, to do colonoscopy for a number of years now. And uh, while in the cecum, looking at the appendiceal orifice, I happened to observe that with water filling, the appendiceal orifice will spontaneously evert or prolapse into the lumen. Of course, the lumen is more contracted with water filling compared to air distension. In fact, with air distension, you are pushing a lesion further into the appendiceal orifice, so you may obscure that lesion even more. So the, uh, the AO prolapses out and with endoscopic ultrasound, we know that the muscularis propria stays on the outside. It stays round, if you will. It doesn't follow the involutions of the mucosa and the submucosa. So if we have the mucosa and the submucosa of the AO now spontaneously prolapsing into the lumen, all we need to do now is capture those superficial layers. The muscularis propria stays on the outside, and we've reduced that risk of perforation uh, and uh, hopefully eliminate that risk. You mentioned that the second major difficulty is incomplete resection when uh, lesions are growing into the AO. Um, how do you address this concern? Yeah, I mean, there the issue is our ability to really look and um, interrogate and evaluate the base of the AO. And this is where I think the underwater technique has a distinct advantage. Again, as I mentioned, the prolapsing effect, the spontaneous uh, you know, Inverting of the base of the AO into the lumen allows us to inspect the base for any residual adenoma. In our series, 22 out of the 27 patients had adenomas that extended to the base of the AO. We resected those, but we found that in three patients, there was some residual adenoma seen at the base after resection. And that indicated the possibility that adenoma was extending into appendix, so we sent those patients on to surgery. So in your results, 24 of 27 patients had successful underwater resection. However, four patients were sent to surgery. Uh, can you explain this? Ah, uh, yes, yes. Good point there. Uh, so the reason for that is that even though we had a technically successful resection, the surgical pathology in one patient showed invasive adenocarcinoma, and uh, we referred that patient, therefore, to surgery. Uh, this is interesting. Um, actually, there was no residual uh, adenoma or carcinoma uh, locally uh, at the site of resection, but one of 13 lymph nodes was positive for cancer. Another thing that's very interesting about this paper is adenomas involving the AO are supposedly very rare, uh, but in your study that spans three and a half years, you removed 27 lesions in 27 patients, averaging you know eight cases or so per year. Um, are AO lesions more common than previously appreciated? Um, have we been missing some of these lesions? Yeah, I, I've been thinking about this as well, um, and I was surprised to find that if you do a literature search, you know, we're talking about just isolated case reports, and it certainly sounds like AO lesions are very rare. Um, I think we have been missing these, and um, that they are more common than we thought, and in particular, I think that these sesulcerated adenomas, which as you know, as we know, they're harder to detect to begin with. They're, they're usually very flat, um, they have indistinct borders, they blend in with the surrounding mucosa, 
Um, they sometimes even have a mucus cap that camouflages the lesion. Um, and we found that um, uh, uh, over half of our lesions were actually SSAs. Um, so uh, yes, I think we probably have been missing these. We have seen major advances in optical technology, in advanced uh, imaging uh, technology that facilitates the detection of these lesions. And there's also greater emphasis now on adenoma detection rate, on quality indicators for colonoscopy. So I think endoscopists are spending more time looking for adenomas and in looking at the AO for a possible lesion. And hopefully this paper will further reinforce uh, the need to take the time to carefully inspect the AO. Um, so do you think that the performance of colonoscopy underwater submersion contributes to this, the detection of I, I think so, absolutely. And, and again, it's because uh, you have all of the optical advantages of, uh, of an underwater environment. And I've got a, a nice video that illustrates this beautifully. Here we have a, a patient where uh, we're looking first with gas dissensions. We use CO2, and you can see the typical um, appearance of the AO and the elliptical fold over it, and there's no lesion visible. Now we're filling the lumen with water. Now it's fully submerged in water, and you can see how the lumen contracts, and lo and behold, here is this typical for an SSA, this lesion that prolapses spontaneously wow. in the lumen, and here you see it. That's impressive. This is very typical of what I see with uh, underwater uh, colonoscopy. You know, you, and this is not just at the AO, actually. We're also looking at lesions behind folds that suddenly uh, become visible uh, after water submersion. W were there any adverse events in your experience? No perforations, uh, and that was our biggest concern uh, in terms of resecting lesions at the AO. Uh, we also did not have any post-polypectomy um, uh, leads. We did have two patients who complained of pain after the procedure. How about residual or recurrent lesions on follow-up colonoscopy? So we had very rigorous follow-up in our patients. So of the 23 patients who uh, did not go to surgery, uh, uh, we had follow-up in uh, 21. So 91% of the patients had follow-up. Uh, we had recurrence, we found recurrence in two of the patients. So that would be a 10% recurrence rate. And uh, we retreated those two recurrences. Uh, they were very small. Uh, they were uh, yeah, really at the, at the base uh, of the AO. Uh, and we were able to uh, treat those just with a hot biopsy uh, forceps. Is there a risk of appendicitis in these patients? In theory, uh, yes. I mean, we do get scarring uh, at the base, and so uh, we no longer have communication of the appendiceal lumen with the sequel lumen. And there have been, to my knowledge, uh, two reports of appendicitis following endoscopic resection of AO lesions. Um, and this has uh, been attributed uh, to the scarring, the, the, the thermal injury, the edema, and the scarring that occurs afterwards. Actually, it's probably more the edema because these cases of appendicitis all occurred immediately after the resection. So within one to two days of the resection. So these, this is not a longer term complication, but this was more of an immediate complication. Uh, and so we monitored our patients very closely after the resection. Now they weren't hospitalized, uh, but we called them the following day to see how they were doing and we educated them regarding the signs of appendicitis. None of our patients developed appendicitis uh, after the procedure. So we have not seen appendicitis, but this does remain uh, a, a concern, uh, and the endoscopist performing this uh, you know, should be alert to that possibility. All right. Well, uh, thank you so much for your time, Dr. Ben Muller. Uh, congratulations on your paper. Uh, thank you. My pleasure. That concludes the interview.